this day, O oh Lord. We thank you for gathering the saints at your feet, Jesus, to hear your word again. I pray that our understanding will be enlightened and that we will know the hope of our calling. We will know you more, Jesus. We will understand you more, Jesus. The truth in your word, the way you want us to see things, to your glory alone, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Beloved, we thank God for gathering us again. We want to start with what we learned yesterday. Because we can't move forward today if we don't know what we learned yesterday. If there's going to be noise... If there's going to be noise at your background, just mute yourself. If you have something to say, then you unmute yourself. Amen. Amen. Because other people will watch later, and we wouldn't want them to be just listening to just noise. But that's what we did. So I believe all of us were here yesterday. So we are going to go from the top to the bottom. <laughs> Brother Nathaniel cannot say, oh, he wasn't here because they didn't know him. <laughs> so we're going to start with Brother Nathaniel. Please, what did you learn yesterday? Because we want to know what we learned yesterday so that we know yeah. that we have retained something. We are working in the Word. And then Jesus can add more to it today. Yeah. Um, I learned, you know, we, we have to, we, we need to be, a proof that we are transformed. You know, we cannot say we come to know Christ, but our our lives are still showing like the worldly things. So we we need to be a proof that we are transformed. Like when we go out there, we need to show the world that we are now the light of the world. Like Matthew chapter five verse fourteen says, and um, I think we read something from First John chapter three verse eighteen that. You know, we shouldn't just say we love. Uh, we shouldn't just show the love by just our words, but it should it should be, but with the actions. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. Mama Eunice, please. What did you learn like yesterday? I thought I saw you now. I thought I saw you yesterday. My mind was there. <laughs> okay, let's go to uh, Brother Fred and Sister Nadia and Brother Isaac. They were there yesterday. I saw them. They even asked questions. So they cannot tell us they weren't there. So please tell us what you learned yesterday because we can really not go forward if we really cannot retain anything. We need to know what we've learned. Then Jesus will add more to it. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, Auntie Grace, yesterday I I learned about I learned about. Are you, you very close to Mama? You, <laughs> if you are very close, can you tell her to move a little further because that's why there is echo in the volume. Okay. She need to uh, move away a little bit so that. The echo will stop. There's an echo. There's a feedback coming because you all are close. Um, just, just for five minutes. When they are done, then you come in. When when they are done talking, yeah, because we are having feedback in it. Thank you, Grace. Yes, ma'am. Yesterday, I I learned that if 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 you I, I learned that if you if you if you do something bad and the Holy Spirit tells you to speak the truth and you don't speak the truth, it makes you grieve in the Holy Spirit. And and yesterday our sister even asked a question that um uh, if he, 
Right. If you like, if you do something, does that mean that you grieve the Holy Spirit? And and somebody gave a feedback that yes, um, if you do something bad, like if somebody asks, if you if you take something and your mom asks you that is, did you did you take the money from the table? But you are like no, and and she finds out. It means you're given the Holy Spirit. And and I learned that, and yesterday I also learned that um, and yesterday I also learned that if 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 you see a, a pastor, you, you don't have to like speak against him because you don't know that if you don't know that the Lord is choosing him or not, or you don't know that if he has anointing or not, you do not have to, you do not have to um, speak against him. And yesterday also, I also learned that um, if if we if if we if we give way, the devil will come and dwell in us. And even I asked a question about it, and you explained it. You said that it, it's like it's like me being at home, and somebody comes to knock at the door. If, if if I don't know that person, I'm not going to open. But if I know that person and I open that person, it's like you giving away for the for the devil to come and dwell in you. It's like you opening the door for the devil to come and dwell in you. So that's what I learned yesterday. Amen. Let's wow. let's give let's give her a thumbs up like that. God bless you. God bless you, my sister Nadia. God bless you. It means um, see, we, we are see we are developing Bible scholars. So. By yes. this master, you see how many souls this young lady will bring hey. to the kingdom. As she's growing yes. in the world like that, she will go out there and be telling her friends about the love of Christ and why they must not sin. So uh, uh, to all the uh, big mothers here, if you have teenagers, please involve them in Bible study because you don't know what the Lord is, is feeding them with. <laughs> and what they will go out there and do. Their schools you know, outside, the people, they, these young folks, they talk more than we do. And they make <laughs> more than we do. You'll be surprised that many souls these young folks will bring to Christ. God bless you, Sister Nadia, and I pray that the word of God will be mightily and rich in your spirit, in your bone, in your soul, in everything that you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Fred, Amen. tell me something. You were there. You were on there. <laughs> Please, let's be fast about it. So that we can learn today's topic. Um, and grace, please. Good afternoon. Yes, sir. Um, what I learned yesterday is that um, um, and you, and you thought you taught us about like um, we should we should repent from, from our sins, and you said that um, we said. If we if we repent from our sins, God will forgive us. So so and like what I learned is that like my now like if I learned like if um, I um, I, I repent from sins, God will forgive me. And and what I learned is that. Uh, uh, we like um, all of us should not should not um, allow uh, uh, devil to help us. So that's right. It's not that um, we, we should not let any demons or or uh, or any devil to help us. So like um, like like the way yesterday you thought you thought uh, my father you said like us uh, um, we should not open the door. Mm -hmm. Like if we open the door, we let the most come to us. But um, about but every day, um, but every day, um, all of us to uh, to close our door. We don't let any demon to, to come to us. And instead of um, giving the Holy Spirit, they said that um, uh. And like if, like if um, all of us uh, don't do, don't do uh, what, what the 
what the Holy Spirit comes for. That means we are all. That means we are we are given the Holy Spirit. And and what I learned is that doubt and doubt and unbelieving is that um, like if like if um, someone like if um, and someone preach to about about the word of God and uh, and without it. So that means all of us um we must uh, we must all obey obey um the um uh, the Lord God's law. So that was God talent. bless you. God bless you. Those are our youth. Too. They know the they, those are our Bible scholars among us. The youth. God bless you. I pray that you all be great evangelists for the Lord Jesus and win multitude of souls to the kingdom Amen. of God. Hallelujah. Amen. We bless Amen. God for your lives. And I pray that the power in the word will be released to you, even as you are obedient, even as you study. Please, those who have youth among us, we have started our youth service and our youth ministry. We started last week, Saturday. And so this Saturday, if God gives us our life, we are going to meet. They already know what we are going to talk about for Saturday, but anyways, we will find we will find a way around teaching them new stuff by Saturday. Amen. Amen. I, I just hope that those who couldn't uh, join yesterday and today too, they'll be able to watch the video on our YouTube platform and benefit from it. We bless God for how far he has brought us. Even the three people who have spoken, uh, it's a testimony that indeed we are all learning at the feet of our Lord Jesus Christ. May his name alone praise forever. Please, let's mute our mics so that we can learn what the Lord has for us today. This is the new convert class. Maybe some of the things that we are talking about, maybe you already know, maybe you don't. But it is the purpose of God, of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we will teach it so that in case you don't know, you will come to the realization of the truth. And as his word said that we will know the truth and it will set us free. You'll be liberated or you'll be set free by the truth that is coming to you. And so if we are obedient to the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ, not me, I don't have any word. It is only what is in the scripture that we go by. So if we become obedient to the word of God, then his blessing <laughs> will be released unto us. Because we have that common scripture that says to obey is better than to sacrifice. God bless us all, Jesus' name. So today, um, the new topic that we are treating is the new birth. The new birth or regeneration. And I know I said that I will make videos for the past ones that we've done and have not. May God forgive me. I have time constraints. Every minute of my time is accounted for. And it's, it's been a little uh, hard, but the Lord is our strength. We will, we will make it in Jesus' name. I'm putting the notes on the chat box, those who want to start writing them as quickly as possible. But please, let us also be conscious of what we do. Let it, our mind come on it so that we don't miss anything that the Lord is teaching us. So the new birth is what we're going to talk about. Our key scripture is John chapter 3, verse 3. John chapter 3, verse 3. I believe we all have our books and our pen. This is Bible study. We don't just come to listen, but we write. <clears throat> we are all Bible students. Please, I beseech each and every one of us to take our books and our pen and do right. Because if you listen, you may forget. But if you write, in times of challenges, you can always refer to it and you can always learn something. John chapter 3, verse 3. It says, as a result of man's rebellion against God, humankind became spiritually dead. Communication between God and humankind got broken. No, I'm not reading John chapter 3. No, I'm reading something else. Let's go to John chapter 3, verse 3. John chapter 3, verse 3. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Unless you are born again, 
you cannot see the kingdom of God. This is our Lord Jesus talking. He was speaking to Nicodemus. Nicodemus is one of the religious teachers. And he knew that the Lord Jesus was from God, was from heaven. And so he sneaked to his house at night time to ask about how he would gain eternal life. Many of the Pharisees had rejected the teachings of the Lord Jesus, but some of them also knew that what Jesus was speaking was the truth and was the right thing. So this man, very old, though he didn't get the age, but he was old. He went to Jesus and asked how he would get eternal life. And that was the first response the Lord Jesus gave. He said, I tell you the truth. Unless you are born again, you shall not see the kingdom of God. So being born again means being given a new birth. Those of us who are mothers, who have children, know how giving birth is when a newborn baby comes out. Everything in that child is new, is fresh. So it's as simple as that. And the introduction to this uh, topic is that because of man's rebellion state, we have already learned from the gospel. Please, let's mute our mics. Let's mute our mics. Let's mute our mics. Because mankind sinned against God, we came to understand that it brought it brought separation between us and God. And sin, the sin of disobedience that Adam and Eve did in the Garden of Eden, instead of us living eternally, immortal like God, we were given time to die. Our time on earth was limited. And so we became spiritually dead. We became spiritually dead. Through the disobedience of Adam and Eve, we became spiritually dead. And then our speak or our communication between the Lord and ourselves got broken. That relationship was cut. So it's like two ropes. Someone pulling this end and the other having that end. And the, the rope being cut into two. So if it, if it is cut into two, then whoever is holding the left will have the left side of the rope. And whoever is holding the right will have the right side of the rope. And so God is on this right side. And mankind, human beings, we got on the left side. And on the left side, we were under the wrath of God. God was very angry that we couldn't keep his word. And so there was a need for a savior like we've already spoken about. And that's why, glory be to God, our Lord Jesus, who is one of the tripartite beings, we've already spoken about that, the Trinity God, humbled himself that he will come and dwell among us to know why we do the things that we do. And then we learn that if anybody speaks and says that, oh, God doesn't understand this problem that I'm going through. That person is so wrong. In fact, they are dead wrong to say that. Because we learn that Jesus became a baby. He was spanked. He became a teenager. He messed up. He, he did stuff that teenagers do. He became a man and did what God, the Father, sent him to come and do. And so, we know that there is a God up there. And those who have accepted him, he's in here, in our hearts. And for us to have that eternal life, yesterday we, we spoke about that, the assurance of our salvation. We must have new birth. We must have new birth. New birth is the creation 
or transformation of man by God through the power of the Holy Spirit. The recreation, the recreation or transformation, recreation and transformation of man by God. So the old self, the Adamic nature, the one that disobeyed, has to die, has to be rid of. We need to get rid of it and take the new creation, become completely new, like a fresh baby born in a second, in a day, like that. A newborn baby knows no sin. They don't know any sin. They don't know the left from the right. Up to the time where when you say come, they will come. Don't do it. They know that what you are doing is wrong. So it is like that in Christ. You need to have that new recreation. Become a baby in the sight of God. And that was done through the power of the Holy Spirit. That was done through the power of the Holy Spirit. So the, the soul and the spirit in us gets this new uh, recreation. We become completely new in the sight of God. Our life, everything about us is completely wiped off. And that's why those who get saved through the blood of Jesus and confess in Bible says you become a new creation. God does not remember your sin anymore. When you read the book of Ezekiel, get time and read it. He says that when someone repents from their wickedness and they come to God, every bad, even, including even if they've chopped off somebody's head before, if they've caused murder, murder before, if they've, they've slain thousands of people and they hear, they, they hear about the gospel, and the Holy Spirit convicts their heart. And then they say, ah, I've done wrong. And they cry genuinely unto God for, for deliverance and to be saved. The Lord said he will remember their sin no more. They become completely a new soul, a new spirit before God. God never remember anything about their past. Everything is wiped off. And that is something that other religion, they don't understand. I, I remember a sister was saying that one Muslim told her that, how can one man's blood clean the whole world, uh, every human being? How is that possible? He's speaking from a carnal mind, human wisdom. And that is why it is crucial, it's very important in this end time that you need the infilling of the Holy Spirit to understand some of these things. Because this, this Muslim is not filled with the Holy Spirit. They don't even know who the Holy Spirit is. They believe that what Jesus said is going to come when he leaves is Muhammad. But Jesus said, when I go, the one who will come, he will stay with you forever. He didn't say, we'll come and die. Just like Muhammad came and died and didn't rise up. But they are confused. But we pray that all those who are there and they are for Christ, may the Lord the Holy Spirit convey their hearts so that they will come to the saving grace of Jesus Christ. So man or mankind needed a rebirth to be new. It's like God reforming Adam all over again. This time, not through the physical body, but a new soul, a new spirit in you. Creating a new, a new soul, a new spirit in you that will live in this body. And so this body has to die. And that's what we talked about yesterday. The body and everything in it has to die so that the new soul and the spirit that you have gained will now be the one alive and controlling this body. Please, as I'm talking, you'll be listing down your questions. If I say something you don't understand, at the end you ask your questions. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Let's see what is there. Romans chapter 12, verse 2 about this new birth, what needs to be new in you, in, in you as a child of God. Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good 
what is that good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. So everyone who claim they have come to Christ, they are in Christ Jesus. And you don't feel and uh, not you don't feel and you don't see this new breath in you. Then there's a question mark. You need to question that salvation that you believe or claim you have. Your mindset, the way you think, everything has to change. You have to be transformed. So the things that the world used to do and you, you did the same with them, you will no longer conform. You will no longer agree with what the world is saying. If you go to school and your teachers are saying that it is okay to be lesbian, it is okay to be gay, to be whatever, homo homosexual, to be bisexual, you can go and they will take you, if you're a man, they will take your manhood and, and give you and do surgery and, and make it a woman. What the women have. No. You have to say no to that. We can never agree with the world because what is in the world is darkness. Satan is ruling and their deeds are all wickedness in the sight of God. Abominable, meaning Things that God hates is what the world is into. So we can never conform, meaning we can never agree, we can never be into the things of the world if we claim that we are born again. It's one thing that we must take note of. If the fact that you see everybody doing it does not mean it's right in the sight of God. If, if, if women of late are taking their nakedness to church, by showing half of their breast and putting a, a, rose, a rosary between the pumped up breast. That doesn't mean that that's what Jesus likes. If, if young men are putting necklaces and, and bracelets on, the, on their hand, that doesn't mean that's how God wants young men to, to dress. Because lately the Lord is making me to understand the spirit of dog, the spirit of dog that is ruling in most of these young men and all this fashion that they are into, it doesn't please the Lord Jesus one bit. It does not please the Lord Jesus one bit. So if you're a young man, you've been putting necklaces on, on, on your neck and, and on your hand, Jesus is not so cool with it. Whatever seems cool to the world is not so cool to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? We must never be conformed to the things of this world, but we have to be what? Transformed. We have to be what? Renewed. We have to be regenerated. It starts in the mind. So the things that you were so cool with, oh, this one is nothing. No, it is something. How would Jesus feel? How does Jesus approve of, uh, approves? Does Jesus prove, you know, is, is he in agreement with that step that you want to take? That movement that you are making, that place that you are going. You know, when you read the book of Psalm 1, it says, blessed is the man who sitteth not in the council of the godly, you know, or walk in the path of the mockers, those who mock. So if before you became born again, all your uh, lady friends, you, you meet somewhere and you discuss what that other lady is doing and it's not right and all that, please, you must desist from such, such clicks, is what they call it. And lately when you go to the churches, they have clicks in the churches. This lady and that lady, and that one and that one, they are in one click. And many are there to show their material things and their fashions and whatever it is that is in their closets. And so they are not into the things of this, uh, of the Lord or the word of God, but that they will please their own selves. If that is what you are seeing in your church, know that that is not new birth. They don't have the new birth. They are not regenerated in Christ. And in that manner, they are not born again because that is the word of God. Those people are not born again. And as we just read from the key scripture, unless a man is born again, they will never enter the kingdom of God. This is not judgment. This is the word of God. So unless those people in such acts and practices, unless they repent, unless they change their mind, repentance means changing your mind. 
if you are working on part A, and then you realize that no, okay, I don't, I don't want to work on path A again. I would rather work on path B. You have repented. You've changed your mind. It's as simple as that. It is as simple as that. It is nothing out of the ordinary. It is nothing strange. John chapter 3 verse 6. It says that which is of, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Hallelujah. So if you are born of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have the Holy Spirit in you. And so the things that you do in this world, anytime you're a young girl, you're a young woman, maybe you're a teenager, maybe you're in your early 20s, you are standing in front of the mirror. You're about to step out. You look yourself in the mirror. You ask, you ask the Holy Spirit, Father, the way I am stepping out, does it ap appeal to you? Does it please you? Does it please you? Because many of our youths, our young ones, they are filled with themselves. Just as the word of God said in the end time it will be. That many will be lovers of themselves. And so because they are filled with themselves, it is me, I, and myself. And so sometimes I ask some of these young men, uh, women I see, so why are you dressed like this to church? Well, you know, I'm not there to entice anybody. I'm just, I'm, I just dress to make myself look cute and smart. It's, it's just the way I like it. If you are a true, genuine, born again Christian, it is never about you. Beloved, it is never about you. The Apostle Paul says something. I believe it might be in First Corinthians. He said, you be, when you accept the Lord, you become a slave for Christ. So those who are abusing the grace and your pastors are telling you you are under the grace, you are not under law, you can dress anyhow, you can do whatever you like, you can say whatever you like. All those doctrines and, and heresies are from the pit of hell. It is supposed to make you comfortable sinning with the mindset that you are under grace. So all this God does not count. When the Lord God was looking for a body to come and fill and dwell, to be born, to be birthed, to come and save mankind, why didn't he go for the, the harlots and the prostitutes in Nazareth, in Galilee? Why did the God choose, why did he choose Mary, a virgin? If holiness does not count, it's something I want you to think about. Though, if you're a prostitute, you are a harlot, that doesn't mean God cannot use you for anything. If you are a sheep of God, which the enemy has made you to go astray, in the time God has appointed to get you back on track, he will. But the Lord is always looking for empty vessels, bodies that are emptied of the world, that are pure and sanctified. He uses for his glory alone. So if any minister is, is preaching to you and telling you, you are under grace, do not touch, do not handle, all those things does not matter to God, all is your heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, your mouth will speak. Your body will speak. So if your heart is filled with the spirit of lust, your entire dressing is lustful. And that's why you are exposing your boobs to church. Genesis chapter 3, and God covered the nakedness of Adam and Eve. God covered their nakedness. So do you think God wants to see your nakedness at church? My dear women, do you think God wants to see our half boobs showing our bare backs? You will see some women, they, they will wear a dress, half, they, half, of, half of their shoulder is covered, half is open. Spiritually, you are naked. And just as the Lord warned the Israelites, just as the Lord, he told Moses, warned them that they should uh, be uh, decent and they should be clean because I do not want to come and visit them and see their nakedness, lest my anger and my wrath come upon them. If you like, make time and read the book of Exodus and Leviticus. God told them in plain words, I do not want to come and see your nakedness. Lest my anger comes upon you. 
And so if the man of God is not bold enough to tell you the truth that all those things to God, it is not right, then you need to run for your life. I'll keep saying this till the Lord calls me to his glory because he has given me the mandate to warn his children. We have the mandate and the authority from Jesus to speak the truth boldly without any fear. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. So if the carnal mind is ruling you, you do your things anyhow without asking the Lord, Father, would you have done this? Jesus, if you were in my shoe, would you have gone out with this? I remember I, I shared this, I think uh, uh, last month or so, I took a, a blouse that I was going to wear. I was going to go to Walmart and do grocery. I took one of my, my clothes I bought from this fake China website. <laughs> and that, that blouse has this part of my shoulder. It was open like that. And this part too is open. Immediately I wore it. I'm, I'm standing in, the, in front of the mirror in my bathroom. And the, voice, the Lord just said, this does not befit you as my child to go out like that. Go and take it off. He said, if you are, if you are home, you can wear it. But do not take it outside because it doesn't befit you. And I was like, okay. And I went to remove it immediately. Beloved, if we submit ourselves under the will of God, there is nothing that we will do that he will not tell us whether he approves or not. That which is of the flesh is flesh. And so all the things that you will do, all the decisions that you will do, you'll be like, oh, this one doesn't involve God. Why should I involve God? There is nothing in our life that God is not concerned about. Even the food that you eat. He's concerned when you get sick. And so he should be concerned about the food that enters your belly that can make you sick. Do not limit God, beloved. Don't put God in a box, in a time box, and say, oh God, you, you can work to this limit. This one is earthly matters, so I will handle this. No. No. You can't tell me you have new birth when you handle some stuff by yourself and the rest that you think is over you and above you, then the God should handle that. No, you are mere mortal. How dare you tell God what to do and what not to do in your life? He's God. Amen. He's God. He does what he pleases. And so those who have received the genuine new birth, they surrender their will and their spirit to the Holy Spirit that is indwelling or infilling them. Hallelujah. We are going to look at some of the things that demonstrate new birth or regeneration. And the first one is the word birth. Birth. B-I-R-T-H, birth. Birth is that, that uh, when we say birth, it's newness into something. You say, I've given birth. Something new. A new life has come out of you. And what is new is new. We don't see old or new. Jesus said, nobody takes a, an old uh, uh, wine, a new wine, and put it in, in an old wine sack, lest they will burst out. So when something new is coming in, old things must check out so that the new, the newness will take complete and absolute control. John chapter 1, verse 12 to 13. John chapter 1, verse 12 to 13. It says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power, power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So when you came to accept Christ, Power has been released to you because you have believed in Jesus' name. You have believed that Jesus is the Son of God and you've believed in his name. And there and there, you receive that new birth, not born of blood, not the natural one your mother gave birth to you, not born of the flesh, that you'll be using your mind to think for God. No. His ways are never our ways. Neither are his thoughts. So the new bed that we receive, it is not uh, a mommy and daddy sitting down and say, okay, you are, uh, our, 
our first daughter is two years, so now it is good to have the second child. No, it is not of the will of man, but of God. The next uh, point is cleansing. Cleansing. Cleansing is washing or bathing from the old life. So it's just like, uh, let me give a practical example. Like maybe you've gone, uh, you've gone to work and maybe what you do is a construction work. When you go to a construction site, they do a lot of, uh, excuse me, say like dirty stuff. They, they are missing mortar, like the sand, gravel stuff. And so your body becomes what? Dirty. This is a practical example I'm, I'm trying to give here. Dirty. They, they will look dirty to anybody, you know, who is working in, in an office. All those con con construction people, you know, what they do is really rough. And so when that person comes home, when they come home, they have to do cleansing. They have to do washing. They have to do bathing of the body to erase or to clean that old dirt, that old stuff from their body so that they will smell fresh. The body will look fresh. They will look clean to themselves and to others. So if a constructor, all those who do construction, they come home, they take the, you, if you see them in the evening, you know that, oh, this man is looking fresh. It's not like you saw in the morning when he was doing that. So our old life is like in the daytime, someone doing that construction work. You were into gossip, jealousy, anger, malice, always planning evil, always wishing that that sister who has been eyeing you in church, you wish you would never step a foot into that church again. You wish something terrible happened to that person. That is your old life. That was your old life. So if you claim you are in Christ, there has to be some washing of that old life. There has to be some cleansing of that old, old life. Psalm 19 verse 12. Say, who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. That was the prayer of the King David. He said, cleanse thou me from secret faults. And that's why when you, you become born again, the blood of Jesus automatically cleanse that sin, that, that gap that was between you and God. It takes you from that uh, eternal condemnation to eternal life. Thereafter, you'll be you'll be asking the blood of Jesus to do daily cleansing of the old nature of you, the old self. Everything needs to come out. So in our prayer, we ask for forgiveness of sins so that we will be perfect in Christ. We are, we are working towards perfection in Christ. And that's why the Apostle Paul, when he was speaking, he said, not that I've become perfect, but I strive. I, I do my best. I am striving towards the goal. And then when he was about to die, he was about to finish. He said, now I have fought the good fight. What is left for me is the crown of righteousness that awaits me. So as we are in Christ, we are... Okay, somebody put, an, put a, a scripture here. Exodus 20. Verse 26. Thank you, my brother uh, Nathaniel, for the supporting scripture. He just put a, a scripture in the chat box, those who want to write it down. The Lord said he doesn't want to see any nakedness on the altar. And that's true. And that is very true. So we must be thoroughly washed. We must be cleansed from the past life and receive newness in the Lord Jesus. Psalm 51 verse 2. Psalm 51 verse 2 also said, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. And that was another prayer of the King David. And that is something that we must pray daily if we've not been able to overcome this old life of ours. Being in Christ, we need the cleansing, thorough cleansing of the, of the bitterness I cannot forgive this one did me. This one hurt me. It's so bad. I can never let it go. In fact, the Holy Spirit made me to understand. When, when, when I relocated from Tennessee to Iowa to be with my husband, and the Lord said I should call some people from Tennessee and apologize to them 
And I was like, these people you are telling me to call, they offended me. Why should I call them? But even, even they offended me. I have forgiven them. So why should I call them? And the Lord told me, the Lord said to me in, in a plain word, he said, if someone says that I have forgiven you, but I can never forget, in the nutshell, you have not forgiven. That is what the Holy Spirit told me. He said, if you say that you are forgiving them, but yet when you hear the person's name, everything they've done to you come back afresh. It's like the whole thing has been raised, you know, <laughs> reversed. Everything came, comes fresh in your mind. It means you've not forgiven the person. And so it, it, it was so hard for me. I was like, you want me to call those people who really hurt me? You want me to do that? He said, call them. He said, call them and tell them that they did you this. You are forgiving them. And if they also have anything against you, they should let it go. Beloved, I say this with all humility. And I say this to the glory of God. I picked my phone and I called all the women in that church. I called all the women, at least all those that I had their numbers, even those that I didn't have, I asked for their numbers. And I called them individually. Please, when I was living in Tennessee, if I did anything wrong, please forgive me. I didn't know what I was doing, so please forgive me. And then some of, some of them will be saying, oh, Grace, you didn't do anything. Meanwhile, I know they had something against me. Oh, we forgive. I don't even have, I don't even remember. And I was like, please, for heaven's sake. The Lord said, I should be at peace with all. And without wit, I will not see the Lord. So please, whatever you harbor in your heart against me, please let it go. I beg in the name of God. And I called all these women. And beloved, to God, to the glory of God alone, not to take any glory for myself. Since that time, I have felt peace within my heart, within my spirit. And before, I, if you do something to me, if you say something I don't like, I will hold it for a long, if I'm not able to tell you my peace of mind, I will hold it in me. Anytime I'll see you, my heart will be hurting. It's like needles through my heart. It's like blade cutting through my heart. But this time, nothing, nothing upset me. And I said it to the glory of God, nothing. Even when I came back to Tennessee, nothing. If you see me, you eye. If you look at me in any bad way, I don't, it doesn't move anything in me. All because I obeyed the voice of God. I did that restitution, called them, apologized to them. And so my heart was set free from all that burden of bitterness, anger, unforgiveness, that unforgiving thing. It left completely. And so I recommend that to you. Speak to the Holy Spirit. He will tell you what to do. Hallelujah. When you read Ezekiel 36, verse 25 to 27, it says, Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Will I cleanse you? A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart. Some of us, we have a stony heart. Because regardless of how many times we hear the word, we go back to the same thing. Ah, so this one did this to me and you want me to forgive. I pray that every stony heart among us will be changed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Then I will give you a heart of flesh and I will put my spirit within you. I pray that the Holy Spirit will put an excellent spirit within us and we will work according to the status of God always forgiving people always at all times even when it get past 499 times as jesus said we must forgive others in jesus amen. name amen the next point is quickening 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 uh, we can see that in titus chapter 3 verse 5 titus chapter 3 verse 5 it says not by works of righteousness which we have done but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration, the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So that which was dead within you. Sometimes you, you hear somebody say, I don't really feel God is with me. 
because I, I don't see anything. I don't feel him. I don't see anything. You need the quickening of the Holy Spirit. That is all you need. One dose of the Holy Spirit, morning, afternoon, evening, and you'll be cleansed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You'll be quickening. You'll be quickened in your spirit. That which is lying dull and dormant, you know, that you are not able to feel any restoration or, you know, any movement in your spirit. Sometimes somebody will say, I don't even feel like getting up to pray. I don't feel like doing this. I don't know what is happening. That heaviness, all you need is the Holy Spirit renewing in you. That will quicken that mortal being of yours. The next point is resurrection. Just as Jesus resurrected from the dead. Yesterday we came to understand that we died with him and rose up with him. And since we died with him, this body must be dead to sin. Those who were here, I believe you, you remember. I hope, we, I hope we remember that. So resurrection, as we died with Christ, so we've what? Resurrected with him. And then when you read John chapter 5, verse 24, it says, Very, very, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me have everlasting life and shall not come into, come into uh, condemnation, but is passed from death into life. So when the rebirth comes, we know that we are no longer going to be eternally condemned in hellfire. But we've been taken from that dead, dead state in our sin. And now we have resurrected to newness of life in the Holy Spirit, preparing us to make heaven. I hope that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Because the introduction has said that because of disobedience and sin, we were dead. Before God, we were all dead. And now through the blood of the Holy Spirit, uh, the, uh, of the Lord Jesus, we are now being resurrected from that dead state, which is eternal, what, condemnation. All of us were supposed to die, go to the uh, hellfire with, with, with Lucifer and the fallen angels. But anyone, hallelujah, thank mm. be to Jesus Christ, anyone who come to Christ, which we came to understand yesterday that anyone who come to him, he will never reject. Anyone who come to him and embrace him completely and let the old life go and submit under the word of God, you will be resurrected. That second death, your name will be taken off and your name will be written in the Lamb book of life. Praise God. And that is the hope of our calling. That is the sole hope of our calling. Another point is that we get new, we become new creation. This new birth makes us new creation before God, like I've, I've already said. So John chapter 3, verse 1 to 5, Jesus had to explain this to Nicodemus, who was the, one of the ruler of the Jews. He said that when he came and said that, how can I, how can I get eternal life? What, what should I do? What must I do? And the Lord told him that except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And, and Nicodemus asked him, how can an old person like me enter into my mother's womb? See, Nicodemus, he knew the scriptures, so he knew the Torah. So if anybody is telling you, oh, anybody who haven't read the Torah and whatever not, uh, God is angry with you, blah, blah, blah. If you are not in the New Testament, you get lost because the Torah, the Old Testament, was, was all a shadow of what was to come. All that happened in the Old Testament was a shadow of the Christ that was to come to redeem us from our sins, from the burden of the law, which nobody could keep. What was the law? The, the hundreds of, of bulls and, and, and goats and sheep that we were supposed to sacrifice every year whenever we sin. Man could not do it. Many didn't have the money to buy goat to go and plead for their uh, sin. And the Lord has to take all out and make it one time sacrifice. Thank be to Jesus Christ. Amen. So to know the Old Testament is good 
so that you can even understand better what the New Testament has come to fulfill in your life. But if somebody just tell you that, forget about the New Testament and just concentrate on the Old Testament, that person is not doing any good. I know there's a young man running about on Facebook and YouTube, always reading the Old Testament and condemning those who are preaching in the New Testament. All those are heresies and, and, and things that is supposed to lead the children of, of, of God. The New Testament believers are astray. Jesus came to fulfill the actual truth, the actual path God really, or the standard of God, the Lord wanted mankind to live. So you cannot just dwell on the old and think that you are pleasing God. No, no, it doesn't go that way. Nicodemus knew the law. He knew the law very well. He taught the law, but he wasn't a New Testament person. He didn't have Christ and he needed to be taught. And that's why it's always good to learn at the feet of Jesus. Meaning what? To get teachings, sound doctrine, so that you understand the hope of your calling, the salvation that you have, the assurance in that salvation, the new birth that you've obtained through the Holy Spirit. He said, how can I enter my, my mother's womb again? As old, he was probably gray-haired. And Jesus said, I say to you verily, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot. And that is why the New Testament believers, we believe in water baptism and the Holy Spirit baptism. And so if you find yourself in a, in a church that condemns the Holy Spirit baptism, you need to run away for your life. Because Jesus said, without these two, you can't make it. So why must you be in a church or in a ministry that is condemning the Holy Spirit baptism and telling you that the new, be the new uh, end time, we don't, the Holy Spirit has finished its work, uh, his work, and we don't need it. It's a lie. And it's a lie from the pit of hell. Why do I always use that? Because anything contrary to the truth is from the pit of hell. The devil is the father of lies. And that's why I always use that term. Jesus himself, the one who is coming to judge this world, said, we must be born of the water and spirit. And somebody somewhere is telling you that, you, oh, you don't need the spirit baptism. Which means it's a lie. That person is trying to lure you. The opposite of the kingdom of God is where? It's very simple. If you are not entering the kingdom of God, where are you entering? There are two things involved. It's either you are getting eternal life or eternal condemnation. It's heaven or hell. We have to choose one. Heaven or hell. And if anybody wants to deceive us and tell us that we don't need the infilling, the indwelling, the baptism, the giftings, the fruit of the spirit, Beloved, I will keep repeating it so that the Lord come and rapture me. They are luring you into hellfire. They are taking you to hellfire and you must run as far as your feet can carry you. Run for your life. Any, any, uh, any ministry, any church, any group, any cause, anything that does not accept the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ has the spirit of antichrist. I tell you this and I tell you in truth. Read 1 John chapter 3. It is there. The spirit of antichrist is already at work. It was there even when Christ was there. It was in the Pharisees. They were always against Christ and his teachings. And today it has even worsened. So we must be vigilant. We must guide our ears. The doctrines that we listen to. Those we are going under the sound of their voice. We must be careful so that nobody deceive us. Nobody. De it is like, like my slogan says, hell is too hot. Eternity is too long. Hell wasn't made for mankind. Never you entertain any doctrine that will take you there. Nobody died for you but Jesus. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. He says, therefore, 
If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Please be, be jotting down your question so that you can ask. Behold, all things are become anew. If anyone be in Christ, if any woman be in Christ, to be in Christ, meaning you are walking according to the word of Christ Jesus, you are walking according to the word of God, and therefore you are walking according to the will of God. And if that is the case, you become a new creature. In the sight of God, they no longer see the spiritual DNA uh, whereby your great-great-grandparents were worshipping uh, an idol called Busumburu. No, you, are, you now have the spirit of God in you, a new creation in God. All old things, everyone, including everything, must be dealt with. You say all things passed away. So if you are the one, you are called uh, Lady A, the gossiper. Now they have to look at you and say, Lady A, the God-fearing, the godly lady. If you are the one who is creating discord in your family, always creating discord, turning uh, other, other siblings against father, other siblings against mother, please, you must deal, uh, uh, all those things must be dealt with. You have to let all of it go. If you want God to see you as the old, uh, the new creation in him. Okay, someone has a question. He said, do we receive the Holy Spirit after being baptized in water? Let me show, uh, share my experience with you. I got baptized with the Holy Spirit before I got water baptism. The most important thing is that you must receive both. Hallelujah. Whichever one comes first is not the issue here. But you must have both. And someone had a question the other day that this, this woman was a Muslim. She got converted. She was prayed for. And I think on that same day, she got the Holy Spirit baptism or so. But few days, few days after that, she was home and the husband, who is a Muslim, killed her. Is that person going to uh, hell or will have eternal life? Would that person go to hell or have eternal life? It was a question that was thrown in the Bible study. Okay. Just as the man, you, two sinners were on the cross with the Lord Jesus. One said, when one defended Jesus and said, when you get to your kingdom, please remember me. The Lord forgave him at that very point. That man did not receive the Holy Spirit baptism, neither did he receive the water baptism. But Jesus said, today, you shall be with me in paradise. Hallelujah. He is God. He does what he pleases. And so the, in this condition, in this situation, the man was dying. There was no way they could bring him down, go give him water baptism in Jordan, get the Holy Spirit on him before he would die. I hope we are all understanding this. But you that is listening right now, as you listen and you get the understanding, then you, you accept the Lord Jesus, whatever it is that you do, then you yearn for the Holy Spirit and we pray for the baptism to come upon you. You get it. And if you need water baptism, we look for the nearest flowing river, get you that water baptism and you live for Christ. But a situation where you died before that water baptism was given, that is up to the Lord. Because it is in our plan to get you the water baptism. But maybe somebody somewhere came to knock you with their car. And, you know, the Lord received your soul. He is God. He does what he pleases. As long as that you received him, as long as you received him, accepted him and genuinely repented and had the spirit of God in you. I strongly, I strongly, and I speak with some, as someone with the knowledge of God. I strongly believe that if you, if you died 
maybe a day or two before that water baptism came to reality, the Lord will accept your soul. The Lord will accept your soul. Hallelujah. So we are going to go into the questions. Let me finish this uh, quickly and then we'll go into the questions. So that I, I don't want it to prolong to the next. So that when we come back next week on Monday, we will um, go into new topics because there's a lot that we must know so that we can bring all the souls that are perishing to our Lord Jesus Christ. And also the next point is conversion. Conversion means turning around. Conversion means turning around. The Lord always spoke about this turning around thing to the people of Israelites. Wherever they are heading towards, they are heading towards a bad direction. They are following other gods. They are following other gods served by other nations. Then he will tell them, turn around and come back to me and I will save you. When you look at Hosea, Hosea chapter 14 verse 2, he said, take with you words and turn to the Lord. Say unto him, take away all iniquity and receive us graciously. So we render the calves of our lips. And so whatever situation that you are in, don't let the enemy tell you that. Don't let him tell you that, oh, when you turn around and go to God, he will not forgive you. He's a merciful God. He is a compassionate God. Always seek for mercy. Always seek for his grace. And he will save you. Luke chapter 19 verse 8. It, it says that, And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. This is restitution right there. Conversion or turning around, I can also term it as restitution right there. As you have heard the good news, as you have heard the truth, if you are owing somebody, you work and pay that back. If you did someone wrong, look for the person as long as they are still alive. Look for them. Seek for forgiveness. If it is because of you, someone stopped going to church. Someone stopped fellowship. Seek that person out. Ask for forgiveness. If they can be found. Even if you don't know their whereabouts, you can go to God in prayer. The Holy Spirit knows every one and where they are located at the same time. He's the all-knowing God, all-seeing God. He's at every place at the same time. Jeremiah 23, 23 said, Am I a God far away, declares the, the Lord, and not God nearby? Is anything hidden from me? Do I not move heaven and earth? He sees beneath the earth. So if there's someone that you need to seek, apologize and make amends. Ask the Lord, Father, show me where this person is. Go to God in prayer genuinely. The Holy Spirit will lead you to that person. Restitution is very important to God. Turning around, conversion, very important to God. Zacchaeus, after Jesus had come to his house, he saw the need to render he said, I will give, I will restore to them. Zacchaeus is a tax collector. He's a tax collector. He knew that he had done wrong. But the truth has come to him. Just as the Lord always says, he said, today, if you hear the truth, do not harden your heart. Sister, my brother, if you hear the truth today, please do not harden your heart. Do your restitution. Those you need to apologize, do. Those you need to say, I'm sorry, will never take anything from your beauty. It will never erase anything from your wisdom. Oh, some people think, oh, that will make me stupid, look stupid before that person. For your own soul's sake. Let them see you as the stupid one. For your own salvation's sake. Because on the day of judgment, you can't go and stand before the Lord Jesus and say, Daddy, I didn't, I didn't want to look stupid before that girl. No. I didn't want that person to think that I'm not smart. Why would I apologize? The Lord will say, depart, you workers of iniquity. May God forbid that it will come to that point with us. As we've heard the truth, the Lord expects us to run along with the truth. The next point is renewal. Renewal. 
Colossians 3.10, it says, And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, after the image of him that created us. And so we are going back to God as originally planned by him. When you become, you are given the new birth with the Holy Spirit. You become a new mind, man. Your mindset is renewed. Your attitude, everything is renewed. So the things that you used to do before, you don't do it again. And you do not expect anybody to come and tell you, oh, sister, why are you doing this? Oh, brother, why are you doing that? No. You already know what to do. You already know what to do. Colossians 3.10 talks about the renewed knowledge. The things that you didn't know in the past, now you know. So there will be no excuse for you. Love it. There will be no excuse for you. I, I really pray for those who are living in ignorance. And that's why I'm always on YouTube preaching. Why? Because the Lord said, sound, sound the caution to them. I do not want them to die in their ignorance. For they will have no excuse. If you go to any American court or any of these judicial courts in your country, wherever you are, and you go and tell the judge, your honor, please, I didn't know that this was a crime. That will not make them set you free. No. Even man, even that judge who is a man, he will not set you free. He will never set you free. You will go to jail if you need to go. You will be sentenced. How much more the creator of that judge? He's the, he's the universal supreme judge. The next point is salvation. When we receive that newness, that new birth, salvation is come. We are no longer under darkness or under the manipulation of darkness, but we are translated. We are being transformed into light. Colossians 1.13 talks about the salvation that we get in the new birth. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. And the next point talks of the translation. When we get salvation, we get translated. And that is in Ephesians 1, verse 3 to 4. Reconciliation. We get reconciled with God. When we get the new birth through the Holy Spirit, we get reconciled. So just as I said in the introduction, we, because of the sin, we got an alienated. We were like foreigners to God. He didn't knew us. But now, through the new birth, through his gift, through his spirit that is indwelling in us, he brings us back to him through Jesus Christ. So when God is looking at us, he looks at us through his son, Jesus Christ. So anytime we sin and we, we plead the blood of Jesus, Jesus petitioned to God, say, Father, Look at what I went through so that these will be saved and we are forgiven at once. So we get reconciled with God. We get a new heart. When the new birth comes, we get a new heart. There's newness in heart. So if someone says that, well, the Holy Spirit is in me, I speak in tongues, but I'm still shy. I cannot tell somebody about the love of God or the heaven or hell. I don't think your heart has been renewed. I don't think you've had a change of that heart because he gives you, he takes that old heart that is shy, that, is, that has fear in it, that is always intimidated, feel intimidated, and all those, you know, things that we classify people to be. Somebody will say, I'm outspoken. Somebody will say, well, I am not outspoken. I, I, I don't like speaking in front of people. When newness comes, when the Holy Spirit comes in, all those characteristics checks out. You get a new heart. Why am I saying that? When Jesus was arrested, Peter didn't have the Holy Spirit in him. A young girl, a little girl, threatened him. He said, you, you were part of those disciples. Even your voice betrays you. Peter swore, he said, he swore, he said, I swear, I don't know him. Why? Because his heart had not changed. He, has, he had worked with Jesus for three years of his ministry. 
but because Jesus had to go before the Holy Spirit came. And so Peter wasn't filled with the Holy Spirit at that time. Fear was in. He felt intimidated. He felt scared. So if someone is born again and still suffering from the spirit of fear, sister, you need deliverance immediately. You need to cast out that fear. For God has not given us the spirit to fear, ever. That heart is changed. We become fearless. We become feisty for God. No, not to go out and, and fight. Mm -mm. For our warfare is not carnal. We don't go out fighting on YouTube and all those media platforms. We don't do that. When we are filled, we are filled with the Spirit of God. We don't do that. We are moved by the Holy Spirit. We are moved by the Holy Spirit. And according to his leading, we walk. We walk the talk. So we get newness of heart. We believe that if, if we believe that if we died with the Lord Jesus, then the old heart also died. And the dead heart can never, if your heart is dead and you have an old one, how can you have all, you know, or have in it bitterness, malice, anger, jealousy? All those things belong to the old heart. So you say bye bye to it. Said, old heart, go. Bye. I have nothing to do with you again. I'm now a new creation in Christ Jesus. People, you don't get offended easily. No. None of those things moves you. Why? Because the spirit is in charge. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. It says, once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins. But when you read further, it talks, it talks about... When you read the 4 and 5 of the same chapter 2, it said, but God is so rich in mercy and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. And that is why we get water baptism by immersion. Because the immersion will go down and it signifies that you died with Christ and when he resurrected, when you, you are taken out of the water, you also get that resurrection that we've already spoken about. And so all those who had the sprinkling when you were three months, you need immersion of water. Immersion into the water. Dying with Christ, resurrecting with him into newness. It is only by grace, by God's grace, that we have been saved. It is only by God's grace. We did not do anything to merit it. We did not do anything to merit that. Colossians chapter 2 verse 13. He said, you were dead because of your sins. And because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive. Hallelujah. God made you alive with Christ. For he forgave all your sins. The Lord has forgiven us. Let no man accuse you and tell you that, oh, because of this or that, you are into hellfire or you are already in hellfire. Whatever it is, when you repent, you become a new creation in God through Christ Jesus. Why the need for new birth? That's my next question. Why the need? Why do we need to have new birth in Christ? It is very necessary because we are dead in sin. We are dead in sin. When you are living in sin, God does not recognize you. You are dead. And that's why Jesus, when he was speaking to, uh, uh, I believe, Laodicea Church in the book of Revelation chapter 3, he said, you, you are dead, but though you, you, you seem like you are dead, you are dead. Before me, you are dead. Many Christians or so-called Christians, they are living dead before God. Why am I saying that? Because they are still living in sin. They are practicing sin every waking moment. They, they, sin is a lifestyle to them. And I'm not saying a Christian doesn't sin. That's different. We fall into temptation. We fall into sin. But we rise up quickly. But there are people that still call themselves Christian. Sin is their daily lifestyle. I can talk of Ghana police. A lot of them. Every day they're on the road taking bribe from these trot uh, drivers. 
their, their practical lifestyle is sin. Their daily lifestyle is sin. They are not checking proper documentation of these people that are driving, these drivers that are driving with uh, even expired licenses. They will just put money in the driver's license. They will give it to them. And, oh yeah, they go. So you need a new birth because you, we are dead in sin. We were dead in sin. And so when you get the new birth, you come alive. So when you read Ephesians 2, 1, it is there. Ephesians 2, 4 to 5, it is there. Colossians 2, 13 also talked about the same thing. The next one is that we need to be reconciled to God. There had to be the reconciliation that I talked about. That is why I'm talking about the importance of the new birth. If someone asks you, well, why do I need to have a new birth? Then you have to tell them that they were dead in sin. And so there was a, a need, a, ne a necessity to be given a new birth. And then we were far, far away from God. And we needed to be reconciled, to be brought back to God again. So that we can cry, Abba, Father. And he responds. As soon as we bow, he responds. And the third thing is that without the new birth, we cannot enter the kingdom of God. So anybody who seeks to make heaven, you need a new birth. New birth in the spirit, new birth in water. Except for situations God alone will take care of. How can one be born again? That is the next question. How can one be born again? The first thing is repentance and faith in Christ Jesus. You need repentance and faith in Christ Jesus. So these are all golden nuggets for our evangelism. And everyone is an evangelist in Jesus' name. So if someone asks you, how can I be born again? He said, brother, just repent. Genuinely repent from all your sins. Make a determined decision that you will not do this again. And have faith in Christ. So John chapter 1, 12 says, But to all who believe in him and accepted him, he gave them the right. The King James said, he gave them the power to become children of God. And Mark chapter 1 verse 15 also says something about the born again. Romans 10, 8 also said the same thing about it. So what do we gain? What, what is the result of this new birth? What is the result of this new birth? We're going to run through quickly and we will open the floor for questions. What is the result when we get new birth? The first thing is that one receives salvation and a new life. When we get new birth, we receive salvation and a new life. So when you look at Titus chapter 3 verse 5, it says he saved us not because of the righteousness, the righteous things we have done, but because of his mercy. He washed away our sins giving us a new birth and a new life through the Holy Spirit. So I will repeat this again. Any set of group that you belong, that does not acknowledge the indwelling, the infilling, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you need to run for your life because that will lead you to hellfire. I am not the one saying it. Titus chapter 3 verse 5 just said that. And then, the next point is that one gains admission into God's kingdom. I like this point too. It says we gain admission to God's kingdom. Whilst people are gaining admission to universities and, and colleges and, and, and whatever places they are gaining admission to, we are gaining admission to God's kingdom through new birth, through the Holy Spirit, because we have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. John 3.3 3 says, I tell you the truth. Unless you are born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. So if we want to gain admission to the kingdom of God, now we know what we need to have. They take it to the kingdom of God. It is nothing but what? New birth in Christ, born of water and spirit. After you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And another point is that we become a new creation. We've already spoken about it. You become a new entity in Christ. Become a new entity. So no longer are you bound by the, the curses of your great, 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 great grandparents. 
because they were worshiping idols or Lucifer and they made covenant. And that's why we must refer God when we are praying that we are no longer under that spiritual DNA of our parents or our late grandparents or aunties or uncles who didn't know you, God. Ezekiel 18, 20 said, the soul that sinned, that soul will die. That soul will die. And everybody will account for their iniquities. And so when we get new birth, we become new creation. And we can base on that scripture and tell God to remove us from any demonic covenant our forefathers had with Lucifer. But if you, if you do not know this truth, how can you gain freedom from it? And that's why it's very good to stay under the feet of Christ and to learn. So 2 Corinthians 5.17 is the repetition. It's the same thing. We also have victory over sinful life. When you get new birth, and it is because Holy Spirit is giving you this new birth, you have victory. You gain victory over sinful life. So sometimes somebody will say that, Sister, I don't know why I do this, so, but I keep doing the same thing. When you allow the Holy Spirit to come in, to take absolute control, that sin, that keeps repeating itself. When you are going to do it, it will tell you, no, don't do it. And because you have surrendered your will to the Holy Spirit, all your response is, yes, sir, I won't do it. It's as simple as that. The Holy Spirit can prompt you and tell you, don't do it. Master courage, don't do it. He will not force you not to do it, but he will tell you not to do it. And he speaks through our conscience. When you get new birth, the Spirit of God lives in your conscience. And he makes you rightfully divide between the good and evil. You rightfully divide between good and evil. And so you no longer satisfy the body. It is not me, myself, and I again. You ask the Lord, Father, what I'm, I'm taking to uh, house outside, is it pleasing to you? What I'm about to say to my sister, how should I say it so that he doesn't get offended? The Lord said, Matthew 18, the Lord said, the things that causes people to stumble in this world must come, but woe unto the one through whom it comes. So if your sister stumble because of the evil words, the poisonous word, that out of anger you said to that person, Jesus said, woe, woe means curse unto you. And that's why we have to gain victory over all those things, all those practices. And it is by willfully giving our will freely without him forcing us. We tell the Holy Spirit, lead me. Tell me what to say and what not to say. I lay down every pride, every arrogance. Take me, have me, and let thy will be done. You will no longer be controlling your body, but the Holy Spirit in you tells you what to do and what not to do. 1 John chapter 3, verse 9. said, those who have been born into God's family do not make a practice of sinning because God's life is in them. So they can't keep on sinning. So beloved, if you keep repeating the same thing over and over again, know that you don't have new birth. And you need to seek the new birth. You need to seek the Lord to come in, the Holy Spirit to come in. He will not force you, but you are telling the Holy Spirit, I am surrounding to you this time. Take over. Lord, take over. I can't do this anymore. I am tired of repeating this sin over and over again. Take over me. He said, anyone does not live, anyone, anyone who does not live righteously and does not love other believers does not belong to God. So, so many church goers, but our ways our deeds are evil. We need new birth in us. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to take over completely. It also gives one the ability to do what is right. I've already spoken about that. The Holy Spirit with the new birth gives us the ability to always, always do what is right. Once you have received the new birth, you will always live the righteous living Christ wants us to live. 
Jesus said in Matthew 5, 48, he said, so be that perfect, even as your father in heaven is perfect. So if somebody tells you that, oh, we are, you know, we, we are weak. Yes, we are weak, but that's why the Lord has given us the Holy Spirit. And if you give him full attention, full control, that weakness will go away. I guarantee you. I know some weaknesses that I was in. Because I was somebody that if you offend, if you tell me something I don't like, I'll give you a cheeky answer right away. If I don't, then I will, I will have a hurt about you in me. So it's either I tell you, I tell you my peace of mind. And so many who knew me will tell you that, oh, this lady, we know her. She'll give you a cheeky answer. But glory be to Jesus, today, nobody can come and stand for me and say, oh, you are still giving cheeky answer because he has transformed my life. And I say that with all humility. If you completely surrender to the Holy Spirit, you will always do that which is right. You will always, always, always. It also gives us the ability to love others. The new birth with the Holy Spirit gives us the ability to love others. So the sister, that brother, you cannot forgive and let go and love as you used to. Allow the Holy Spirit in, sister. Brother, allow the Holy Spirit in. He said, dear friends, 1 John chapter 4, verse 7, 7 to 10. Dear friends, let us continue to love one another. For love comes from God. We saw that one of the nature of God is love. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. But anyone who does not love does not know God. For God is love. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us. And he sent his son to sacrifice, to take away our sin. So how dare you not love that sister? Upon all the, the, the wickedness of man, God overlooked it. But you cannot overlook your sister's sin. You cannot overlook the hurt. Really? How can you be saved? Jesus said, if we cannot forgive one another, then God will not forgive us. It's very, it's, it's principles. It's basic principles. If we follow, the kingdom of heaven will be ours. If we don't, if God hasn't forgiven you, nothing that he has not forgiven will enter heaven. And the last thing is that we gain safety from the devil. When we gain, when we get new birth, we gain safety from the devil. When you read 1 John chapter 5, verse 18, he says that we know that God's children do not make a practice of sinning. For God's son holds them securely and the evil one cannot touch them. Jesus prayed the prayer in the book of John. He said that, Father, those you have given me, nobody can snatch from me. So if you claim you are in Christ, or Jesus is in you, then it means the Spirit of God is in you. And so you don't keep on practicing the same thing over and over. Because you are securely in Christ. And when you are secure in Christ, it means you are doing according to his will. You are doing according to his. Those who don't work according to his will, you are like the prodigal son who wanders about. That lost sheep. That misfinding. When a person is born anew, he becomes a member of the family of God and receives a new life. A life that is eternal. May God bless us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Please, it's question time. Let's bring out our questions. You can unmute yourself, ask questions. We have Bible scholars here who will answer. Amen. Amen. Okay, Auntie, you were talking about um, quickening of the Holy Spirit. So does it mean that the Holy Spirit can actually come down or kind of sleep, or it is ourself, like our bodies, that kind of overshadow the Holy Spirit. It wasn't really clear. Say that one more time. I didn't get the question. Okay. Um, you said we have to quicken the Holy Spirit. No. In... 
No, that's not what I said. The Holy Spirit quicken us. Oh. You don't quicken okay. the Holy Spirit. It was quickening of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Yes. So the Holy Spirit quicken us. Okay. Okay. I understand now. Thank you. Yeah, when you are weak, huh. sometimes you feel so heavy. You know? Mm. So I, I remember I was praying with one lady. Oh. And she was telling me how she, she feels like something is choking her all the time. Like something is practically choking her neck. And so she can't even get any worse out. When the power of the Holy Spirit quickens you, that which you are not able to, you know, get away from, you're able to get all those tangles, the thing that, you know, puts you and tangles you. You get quickened. Like Samson, who has been given a new power and he was able to shake that pillars. He prayed. Samson prayed in the book of Judges. He said God should forgive him for his disobedience and quicken him one more time so that he would die with his enemies. And so the Spirit of God came on Samson. He was quickened. He became strong. Quicken brings strength is what I, I mean. And so he shook the pillars. And the Bible says that the day that Samson died, he killed more than when he was even alive. That's what the quickening do. The things that you are not able to do, it makes you be able to do it. You are able to do that. Okay. Questions, please. Please, my question is, can you pay, like, uh, you own somebody, but you can't find a person. Can you pay to God? Like, you know the amount. Can you pay to God that God, um, <laughs> please, uh, I own this person. But I can't find the person. Please, God, pay the person for me. Like, God should pay the person. That's restitution. And my other uh, question is that, um, can you uh, get uh, the Holy Spirit before deliverance? Maybe there is something tormenting you. You are not in sin. You have uh, departed yourself from sin. But there is some, yes. So can you get the Holy Spirit before? And my last question. Please, is salvation for all? Is salvation for all? Because there are some verses in Matthew 25, verse 34, and then Matthew 20, verse 23, and then Ephesians 1, verse 4. Please, there are some verses there that talks about um, God knew you before um, before the foundation of the uh, of the world. So, yes, please, that's my question. Okay, well, so one at a time. <laughs> my, my teacher will say one full at a time. <laughs> one of my JSS teachers, he was yes. very funny, will say one full at a time. Anyway, let's, let's do one at a time. What, what was the first question? What was the first question? Please, the first question. The first question uh, was that can you pay to God? Uh, as uh, doing restitution, can you pay, pay to God and tell God, uh, you tell God that God, this is the money, please pay the person. Like God should pay the person. Okay. I think Sister Christine wants to say something about that. Oh, no. No, I, I didn't raise my hand to this. <laughs> Anybody want to answer her? But I don't Nathaniel think it's answer. possible anyway. I don't think it's possible. How, how oh, do you find, find the person? You cannot you find, find yeah, it. Okay, um, Auntie, Auntie, as Auntie Rosalind was talking, <laughs> Auntie Grace, she said that the Holy Spirit knows it all and he knows where everybody is at every particular time. So if you pray for the Holy Spirit to kind of bring the person to you or take you to where the person is, you can actually pay the person. Because I don't know, I'm not sure you're taking it to the church for God to pay the person. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, Sister Grace, let me just bring this question in. Is the Holy Spirit able to direct us to anybody at all? Like, just say, yeah. you, you're somebody you want to see for very, very, like, you've not seen the person for a very long time, and there's something you need to trash out with that person. Can the Holy Spirit lead you to that person? Is it possible? Yes. Yes. Yes, it's okay. possible because He wants us to be at peace with all men. And holiness without which nobody will see the Lord. No, not that like not not maybe you've wronged the person, maybe there's somebody you really not need to see, like an old friend that you want to see. Is it possible? Can he lead you to that person? Yes. Yes, in the <laughs> sense that sometimes wow. the Lord needs to deliver a word to that person through you. And I'm go I'm gonna share this from experience. I always tell my husband that 
anytime somebody I've not spoken with for a long time, anytime their name drop in my spirit, like my mind, I need to look for them. I need to call them, make sure they are doing right. Because I called, I, I went to Ghana 2015 and made a friend with a lady called Grace. She has the same name as mine. So I was like, name, you are my name. So I took her number. But since that time to this year, I'm, I never called her. I, I don't know why, but I got so busy, I didn't call her. And so uh, last two months or so, or last month, I was there. Her name came, Grace, the nurse. And I was like, no, I need to pick my, my phone and called and, and I called her. And I was like, is everything okay? Is your marriage, everything okay? I, did, I don't even know why I asked about her marriage. Not knowing that her marriage was in the rocks. You know, the, the, the husband is, is sleeping with the maid servant in the house. Oh, you know? So Ew. the Holy Spirit can lead you to an old person, like a friend, like you just said. So if, if, if he wants you to talk to, yes, he has a way of making us deliver messages or having that person even come to their senses when they are going through stuff, even seeing you. Ah, I know this, I, I know this person. I know that you, she was this or that. And so meeting the person, if they, the Lord lead, lead you to that person, you, you start talking about things and then you, you start sharing your new faith and then that can transform something in that person. You understand? Okay. Back to Sister Cecilia's question. Paying to God for God to pay to that person. <laughs> the Lord, if you pray diligently, I believe that the Lord will make you locate that person. If not, you ask the Lord to forgive you. But I strongly believe that the Holy Spirit is able to lead us to all truth. And that means finding those we need to do restitution with. Unless the person is dead. But even that, the Lord will make you aware of it. He's the spirit of truth. And he leads us to all truth. And that is one thing I've come to know sincerely about the Holy Spirit. To mm -hmm. your second question, please say the second question. Uh, please, the second question was that, can someone uh, receive the Holy Spirit uh, before when, deliverance? Before deliverance. Yes. Baptism or deliverance. Yeah, deliverance. Either water baptism or the Holy Spirit baptism. Uh, yeah, um, I, I will talk about the deliverance. Yes, please. Okay. I, I personally said that I got the, I, I had Holy Spirit baptism before water baptism. I had the Holy Spirit baptism. At the age of 16, I had the Holy Spirit baptism before water baptism. I, I wasn't even 16. I think I was less than that. My mother dragged me to a convention when they were, they were asking for those who don't have Holy Spirit baptism to come. I was, I was playing around and then he said, get, get out there, get inside there. <laughs> get you the Holy Spirit so that you can become. Because I was everywhere. This is so hyper, so hyper. He said, Get inside and go let them lay hands on you so that you get the Holy Spirit. And I wasn't baptized, but I got it that day. And all the madness cleared off my head. <laughs> <laughs> all those things cleared off my head. Anyways, I, I became more sober than before. Anyways, before I got the baptism of, the, of water. But if there is something that is, you know, a spirit that is oppressing you yeah. or inhibiting you, like a spiritual marriage or anything, you cannot receive the Holy Spirit baptism before that. The Spirit of God will cast that demon out because they will not dwell. The Holy Spirit will never co-exist in you with another. He will never share his glory with any idol. He will never share his glory with any spirit. So someone speaking ba 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 and practicing witchcraft, the ba 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 is from the devil, it's not from God. Unless that they, they had the spirit baptism, but along the way they fell from grace and therefore the witchcraft has entered them. It rendered the Holy Spirit non-effective and the spirit of God leaves. So the Baba Baba that he's speaking, there's nothing in it. It's not of God anymore. Understand? Mm. That part is not of God anymore. When you receive it and you allow 
you you especially if you are someone who goes to parties you are eating every place you go you are in public you are always eating you will get witchcraft you will believe it or not if you are someone you go to feel you will eat you go to naming ceremony you will eat wherever the, there's food you are there someone will they, some, they, that spirit will possess you that spirit will possess you it is it is so easy to get it through food so Amen. easy Anything that is entering within you is so sharp. And that's why when somebody gets poisoned, the, the, the possibility of dying quickly, it's, it's just, it's 100% or 99.99999. Because it acts okay. so fast in the intestines. It messes with blood. It acts so fast. Understand? Yeah. Yeah. But Mr. Grace, um, this reminds me. If somebody is bewitching you and the Holy Spirit, you get the Holy Spirit baptism, and let's say, um, there maybe the person has made you barren maybe somebody in your family who is a witch has made you barren or something like that and you're not able to have a baby and let's say you get a baptism it's um it's still going to it's still going to work on you is that um that thing the um the the, the, the person bewitching you is it still going to be working on you when the holy spirit is in you because i'm asking this because um i've seen as i've seen a lot of people in the church who who have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but then um, each time they pray for them, there is a spirit that manifests through them. That oh, me na me yen say I will never leave you alone. I will never, you will never go scot free. You will never have a baby. You know. Meanwhile, they they speak in tongues and they do. Yeah, tongues. they have. We believe they have the baptism anyway. Is that possible? They just need uh, deliverance. Those people, they just need. That deliver so that whatever demon that is tormenting them uh, will, will, um, will check out, will leave them alone. Check out. Yes. Yeah, but let's say um, each time, each time you pray for them, mm -hmm. there's something that manifests. Is it possible that way? Each I'm time. asking this because there's a lady that I've come to realize in the church that she's got their baptism right, but like um, each time they pray for her, something actually manifests. Like today is this, tomorrow is that. So no. I, I was kind of no. like thinking. No, it shouldn't be doing is, that. Is this? My sister, it shouldn't be each yeah. time something is manifesting. When you Yeah, are mostly, most of the times. There's something manifesting. I will not set you free. I've done this to you. I'm, I'm against your marriage. You know, each time there's something. And then I'm like, what's, what's the problem? It's, does it mean that the Holy Spirit, even yes. though the Holy Spirit is indwelling, is still kind of like giving those spirits a way to operate in that no. person's life or something like no, that? No, that person is allowing, there, there has there to be a spiritual gateway for an evil spirit to manipulate you. You understand? If, yeah. Like I was a citing example for Nadia yesterday. I said, if I knock, if someone knock on your door and you open, they will do what? They will come in, right? Yeah. Yes. But if you don't open, what will happen? They won't come in. They won't come in. Unless they break the thing by force. If you have the spirit, uh, Holy Spirit baptism, and mm. that doesn't end there, you need to be fortified you need to always fortify yourself. Pray in tongues all the time. You know, you have to have a prayer life. The fact that you speak in tongues doesn't mean, oh, you are uh, witch, witchcraft free or you are uh, demon possessed free. You understand? If you, if you are there, you are not praying. And all you do is to eat, eat, eat. Every day you are feeding your soul with food, physical food, and not spiritual food, which is fasting the prayer and with the word of god then every day they will manifest that is not normal this, it's not supposed to happen this, that way this lady um from what i know i think she does pray a lot but um there was a time i was i was a bit worried so i confronted her excuse me and then i was like ah, so how come you're always being delivered you know i don't understand and then she told me um the body is like a tree you know today the holy spirit will work on maybe it's like a tree with leaves so today the Holy Spirit will pluck this one out. The next day, if it's barrenness, he will pluck it out. The next day, if it is um, financial breakthrough, he will take it out. So that is how it is. So it's coming out one after the other. <laughs> That's what she told me. <laughs> what I know is that when the sun set free, is free indeed. And so if there is a one-time deliverance, 
that uh, is for whatever is manipulating to be cast out. If proper deliverance was done, then the spirit shouldn't be manifesting at certain other time. The Holy Spirit should take over fully. If it's barrenness, if the word barrenness, the word barrenness in the Bible, and he said the barren should not live in the land. That one, if God permits, if God permits it, that womb will be open. It's continuous prayer. But anytime spirit manifesting back and forth in the person, that one I don't agree. That that should be normal. It means that there has been a spiritual gateway. Somebody has entered through the wrong way in there. You understand? Yeah. That is the only time another spirit can come in and and because most of us we've had this Holy Spirit baptism for a long time. And I don't remember being prayed for and not something is manifesting in my mouth. And surprisingly, it's the same thing that always speaks. Like let's say it if means, it's the mom, it's it saying, means he's doing your, something. I'm, I'm your mom. Mm. It is it means there is something that you know he's doing that she doesn't know that this is what is giving way. You understand? Any 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 man of God who has the insight to that can tell them that woman don't do this or that because this gives way to that. Understand? Mm -hmm. Back to your question, Sister Cecilia. Please, please. The last question is that is salvation for all? No. No. No, because the Lord Jesus told the Pharisees that if my father doesn't call you, you cannot come to me. So wow. that's the answer. So those who are for God, God calls them. As the Lord gives me message every day, he said, go and tell them. Those who are mine, they will listen. Sometimes give me something so heavy for my heart, I will, I will be like, why should I go and say this? He said, because those who are mine, they will listen. I will do yes. the conversion. You go and do the talking. <laughs> but Sister Grace, if salvation Please. is not for all, then how do you know that... Uh, me, uh, salvation is for me, so I have to work towards it so that the next person who, who, who salvation is not for, how would the person also know that the salvation is not for me? So I, I, does it mean they are, they, they are free to live their life anyhow because salvation is not for them? But that's what she said. She said, Sister Grace says that when you go out to preach, our job is to go out to preach. And immediately you preach. If the person is meant to be for the kingdom of heaven, they will listen and they will change. Do you get it? Um, so that so that mean that there are people I, out there who are like God to God. These people are predestined to be part of the kingdom. So those are the people that will listen. And then there are people there who God knows from the creation of this world that these people are not mine. That's what I'm. I trying believe to so. Ask. I believe so. Ask. There are some oh, verses in there. Matthew. Yes, please. Some verses in Matthew 25, verse 34, and then Matthew 20, 24. verse, yes, please. And then yes, Matthew 23. 20, yes. And then Matthew 20, verse tw uh, 23, and then Ephesians 1, verse 4, 2. Oh, please, Sister Grace, please. Uh, she's, she's going to see... Baby. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh dear. Mm -hmm. Cecilia, can you repeat the uh, Bible the verses? verses. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's Matthew 25, verse 34. And then Matthew 20, verse 23. And then Ephesians 1, what verse 4. 4. Yes, please. Please, Sister Grace. Please. Thank if, you. If you are welcome. If salvation is not for all, why then did Jesus said, um, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him, whomsoever Good. believe in him, shall not Jesus. perish, but, but the person will have everlasting uh, life. life. So if salvation, why did he say that? If uh, if God, if the kingdom is prepared for some people, before even the beginning of the or the foundation of the world, then why did he also uh, why did he also say that 
um, whoever believe in me will not perish, but the person will have an eternal life. Yes, yeah, and it also says that Jesus came to die for us so we can have eternal life, all of us. And I believe Paul also, Paul also says something about when he was preaching to the Jews, they didn't want to listen in the synagogue. So he went to the Gentiles to preach to them because they were willing to listen. So if, say, only the Jews were chosen to get salvation, how then did he decide to preach to the Gentiles too? It's kind of confusing right now, actually. Yeah, it is. Because personally, I thought everybody has the opportunity to be saved if they believe. But maybe some people do not want to believe. Like, um, I believe my wife and I was reading uh, Acts somewhere, and Paul was preaching to, I think it was someone called Lydia, I believe. And it said that God opened her heart so she would accept what was coming. Has that got, and that got to do with who gets saved and who doesn't get saved at all? Amen. 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 That, that we must not be confused here. When he says that whoever the, the father calls is, what can, mm -hmm. is the person who can come to Jesus. But he came for Jews and for the Gentiles. So those right. he predestined, he didn't say those he predestined who were Jews. It's not written like that. Or have you mm -hmm. seen it like that? He said, no. once he predestined. So how do you know how do you know you are you are part of those that are predestined? So it means that the Gentiles, some Gentiles, and um, not all the Jews are going to be saved. Right. Not all the Jews. Because he opened see, he opened the earth and some went into hellfire with their flesh. And when Jesus died, he went to he went to Hades and prayed to some of them. Some yes. uh, got a change of heart, repented, mm -hmm. others did not. It's in right. the book of First Peter or Second Peter, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. You understand? So the fact that he says that they are pre people are predestined doesn't mean that is the Jews. Don't let those people preaching racist uh, messages, hate messages. Don't let their doctrines get to you. Mm -hmm. But it's not for Jews alone, please. Yes, yes, please. He did not. It is never written in the book of Romans. I, I know that predestined is in that those he for new he predestined is in the book of Romans. I know I've read it. He didn't say those he predestined who are Jews. He just said those who he predestined. He foreknew both Jews and Gentiles alike. So how do you know you are part of the predestined ones? When, when you are able to receive the good news and change, the mm -hmm. Lord made me to understand that those who receive his word and change. But Auntie the Grace, no question. Auntie Christ. Grace. Yes, Auntie, what, what if... <laughs> What if you, you preach the word all right, you do whatever the Lord says, but if you aren't part of the steam one? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a question. No? Big woman, you. <laughs> Say it again, please. I didn't hear it. My, my um, daughter is making me. <laughs> I said that what if you preach the word all right, you do whatever the Lord says, that you are not part of the same ones. The chosen ones. Yeah. What if you you preach the what? You preach the gospel? Yes. You do everything all right. You do whatever the Lord tells you to do. But uh -huh. you are part of the chosen ones. Like the same ones. And you aren't one of the chosen ones. Yes. If you are not one of the chosen ones, then you fall away. Because mm -hmm. those who are for Christ, they, they, they hear his voice and they obey. But what if you do, what if you obey him, you do everything all right? What if you, you do? And you, you never go back. You, you, you go back. Him. There's nothing like obedience and going to hell. No. There's not going to be like, I obeyed you, Lord, and I'm going to the and died and I'm in hell. There's nothing like that. So uh, what okay. that confuses my mind. Yeah. Oh, Auntie Grace, I'm trying to ask you a question that uh -huh. if you're a pastor, right, 
you do everything all right. You you really obey God, but you you and you you have you have a member in your church that you aren't speaking with, and still you aren't speaking to that member. But you obey what the Lord tells you to do, and you do everything that the Lord tells you to do. Um, what happens? You you even answered that for yourself, my sister. You just answered the question. If you are not talking to someone, why? I, how come you say you are obeying God? You say we should be at peace with all men. You say you are not talking to someone, so that doesn't mean you are obeying God. No, you are not obeying God. We we ought to love everybody. And so, if you have locked heads with someone, you are doing God, my sister. And you cannot count that as obedience. And let me tell you this no man of God is, is above uh, the member in the church. They all have their uh, weakness. All men of God, all women of God. Everybody has their weakness. And we are all working towards perfection in Christ. And so, don't, don't let your mind tell you that, oh, the pastor doesn't sin, the pastor cannot get angry. The pastor cannot do this or that. He's as human as you are. And that's why we don't fear men. But we, what? We fear God. We respect but we give honor. We respect those in authority. But we don't fear them. If we fear them, the sin against God. The only thing and the only person we must fear is God. And I'm prepared. We must fear God and sin. Please, I hope you understand what I'm saying. Yes, yes. Auntie. And my last question. I was asking a question that can we be baptized but still be in sin? Can you be baptized and still in sin? Yes. Yes, Please. because you have the you have your willpower. The fact that you are baptized doesn't mean automatically you will no longer sin. You have your will. You have to surrender your will to God. If sin is knocking at your door, just like God told uh, Cain, he said sin is at your door, but master it. Don't let sin overcome you. But Cain didn't master the sin. He went ahead and told Abel, his brother. So you can be baptized, yes. You can act in all the nice spiritual gifts, yes. But that, that, that will never prevent you from sinning. You can be speaking in tongues, interpreting tongues, speaking all diverse tongues, healing, raising the dead. But you will still have greediness, covetousness. And if you don't repent, it will take you to hellfire. You can't say, and that's why Jesus said, many will come and say, Father, we prophesied in your name. We healed in your name. We did this in your name. And he will say, depart. You workers of what? Iniquities. Iniquities. So as long as there is one thing against you that you cannot let go, you are, many of these great men of God, when the, the gift on, on them becomes so high, they become too prideful. Pride enters it. Who have ever seen pride before? Is it a physical thing that you will see? It is in the heart. It is it's a sin of the heart, right? It's a sin of the heart. If you are looking down on somebody, how would I know you are looking down on that person? It's inside you. It's in your thoughts. Yes. It's wickedness in your thoughts. Yes. Understand that? Yes. Yeah, so the men of God, they sin. Women of God, they sin. They sin like any other person. We respect them because they are in authority. But we fear God and we fear sin. Amen? Amen. Any Amen. Questions? Thank you. God bless you. To my sister. God bless you too. Please, any question, then we run down. All right. We bless God for his word that he has given us. Uh, Mr. Grace. Question, is it normal to be baptized at church, but not in the sea? Not in the sea. <laughs> Which sea is that? <laughs> Anyways. He said he I think he means rain, rain water. Is that right? Yes, yeah. we believe that Jesus was baptized in the running water. And as we try to live according to the standard of Christ, it is very ideal to be baptized in that running water. But what if you can't get a running water because I wasn't baptized in the running water? But in the swimming yeah. In a yeah, pool. Yeah, me too. Yeah. In a pool. <laughs> These are all man-made stuff. And... 
we, because it's not easy to get it, you know. And this yeah, way, yeah, yeah. Go, you know. go. Let them baptize you. Go in Ghana, Ghana, yeah. Come, we we'll baptize you. When you go to Ghana, go, go to, go to evangelist. Where you go? Kwasi, kwasi, amwa. Kwasi, kwasi, amwa. Hey, yeah. What they say? I should say you do. We we give you water baptism. Heavy sickness. Okay. Sister Grace, <laughs> my last question, please. Um, if you've got pride and arrogance in you. And maybe let's say you're a man of God, a very powerful one like that. And would the Holy Spirit alert you that you need to deliver yourself because you've got this thing in you? In you. Every day, every minute. Let me tell you. See, as I'm here, anytime my anytime uh, my husband does something I don't like, and I get a little bit over my head and I, I talk on top of my voice. The Holy Spirit will just, it's not how to talk to her. The Lord will just do that. It, it will be like a headache to my head. Not, and immediately, immediately I will sit by him and say, I'm sorry for talking like that. And then he will laugh and say, did the Holy Spirit just convey your heart? I said, yes, I don't do that again. You know, and so the Holy Spirit is always, always, See, Jesus loves us so much. He doesn't want any of us to perish. None of us. Any of us to perish. Yeah, I think I can testify a little bit to that. Uh, my wife has sort of pissed me off the whole day, and something keeps pushing me. Just go apologize. Just go apologize. And well, yeah. So sort of, kind of like that, I guess. I yeah, so need please to go, go and apologize. Yeah. Let's obey oh, the I am. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, will never take anything from you know yes. the man that you are in the house. Amen. Yeah, amen. Amen. We must respect each other and love each other. Just like Christ mm -hmm. has loved the church. God bless us all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's begin to thank God for having.